on Wednesdays. We need to give games a deeper dive than just giving you our picks against the spread. We call it Big Game Breakdown. We begin at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time when it's going to be Iowa State at Iowa. Kinnick Stadium for the latest in Cy Hawk Trophy. Um, there, there are a lot of gambling angles to tackle about this as we are seeing yet another unders in the 30s for this rivalry. Um, lots to get into about Iowa as well, but I want to be I sort of open floor here because I don't want to you know, throw anybody on the spot, but like, did we learn anything about Iowa State in the opener about against North Dakota? And if not, what's our what's our read on Iowa State? We've spent so much time talking about Iowa that when I was thinking about the discussion of this game, I thought, you know, we have not really given the Cyclones a hard look. I mean, Danny, we say we like Rocco Becht. That's true. We, we do like Rocco Becht. But in terms of the Cyclones' ability to compete against an Iowa team that we have had kept very close eyes on through the quarterback competition, the redone offense, the Tim Lester era, three touchdowns by wide receivers, yada, yada, yada. I mean, what, what, do, what do we think? What do we know or what do we think about Ohio State, Danny? Iowa State? Yeah. The thing that concerns me is they weren't able to run the football against North Dakota. That is something that is concerning. So, like, they got outrushed. They didn't do it. They kind of had to rely on Rocco Beck, and he's a really Sama good quarterback. Got hurt. What's that? Sama, Sama got hurt. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it's serious. I only so. noticed this because he's on my fantasy team, and he put up, like, no numbers. Like, how? And so he got dinged up and did not return. They so are not – they're not – they don't think it's, like, a bad – he he did, like, a crazy hurdle move, mm-hmm. and that was, like, ooh, yay, but, like, maybe got a little bit nicked up, and they didn't send him back in. I was not getting word out of Ames that he's not going to play. Yeah, it definitely hasn't been ruled out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried about is that they're down a couple linebackers. Yep. They were already down Will McLaughlin for the game. They lost Caleb Bacon during the game. They're probably going to have to rely on a freshman who didn't play last week because he was banged up. The offensive line, the reason they couldn't run the ball last week, but they were down a couple guys on the offensive line that I think they expect to be back for this game. So maybe that'll help improve it. But yeah, it's it was one of those things like when you watch that game, I, I don't know that they were really all that um, 100% effortish. Like, I feel like when Sama felt any kind of tweak, they're like, all right, well, we'll just wow. hold you out. Yeah, and we should probably hold on to win this game without you. So I'm not overly enthusiastic about their defense, especially going up now against what is an offensive juggernaut in the Iowa Hawkeyes offense. I, at the same time, you know, like the first, it's, the first half and second half last week for Iowa were two very different offenses. But the one theme that I did see throughout the game was they didn't run the ball all that well. Like the offensive line was not overly impressive. And again, they're playing Illinois State, just like Iowa State was playing Northern Iowa. Who was North, North Dakota? North, North Dakota. Dakota. So it's like ahead of a big rivalry game, I you tend to be pretty basic and vanilla, especially against an SCS opponent. So, but Again, it was just I was offensive line. I didn't really think was getting a ton of push in the run game, which concerns me. But they've got Cade McNamara and his golden rifle and all those stellar wide receivers and tight ends to just rocket that ball all over the field. So I, it's going to be an interesting matchup. I think we are going to learn far more about both of these teams on Saturday than we saw in week one. What I'm hearing is just two aerial attacks going at each other. It you might know, be. Back versus Cade McNamara airing it out. I did think the one thing, and we talked about this a little bit the other day uh, on the CBS Sports Network uh, podcast show, the emergence of Vanderzee, mm. the freshman wide receiver, like that's something that has to be a sight for sore eyes if you're an Iowa Hawkeye fan, to see a playmaker on the outside with some size that catches some touchdowns, that gets some production. I thought that was m- maybe even more significant development than having a new offensive play caller. Um, so... I follow Iowa State pretty closely because I think Alec Alex Bussey of uh, not Alex Alec Bussey, excuse me of Cyclone Alerts, our twenty four seven site, does a really good job with him. Um, I, I think we got a got a good guy there. I'm kind of curious as to what Iowa State wants to run. I don't think they showed us a damn thing in that game, in part because they have a new OC. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Nate Shieldhouse is on the Rams now. That's so right. we don't know exactly what the new guy will call. I think Iowa State is potentially very good defensive line wise. Um, I think they might have some guys there, but that much linebacker uh, <clears throat> being out is, I mean, that's a real concern. Um, Iowa's got to be better on the O line this year than they were last year, I think, just by returning experience. I mean, I don't know, like, how big is the drop-off? Because they have some backup linebackers who are hurt as well. Mm-hmm. Like, to Tom's point, he said, like, they might be relying on the freshman. That's like, are they down to, like, linebacker five and six on the on the death chart? Like, is that how bottom of the barrel we're going here? Because they got a couple other guys who were dinged, I saw. Um, can, if they can't run the ball, and I like Beck, can they really drop back and throw it enough times on the road to win this game? I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I, I I have some doubts there. I I think they're good at receiver. Yes, I do too. I, um, they're not going to ask. They're, they're not asking players incapable of going out there to make game changing plays to go do it. McNamara. I don't really think he's amazing or even good, but he is way better than what they were running out last year. Like. They were the guy they were running out last year was kind of fun to watch in like a jokey way, but but he really was unplayable. Um, McNamara just being a competent P5 quarterback is probably the largest quarterback upgrade anybody has had this year outside of Miami or maybe Tennessee. Is, well, is Tennessee's the, got the greatest upgrade of all, <laughs> of all time? Um, is the under too low? Well, yes, maybe, no, but maybe not. Here's I think the, it's about right, yeah. If if Iowa finds early success against these backup backers, the rush rate will just be off the charts. Mm-hmm. And they'll just lean on them and try to grind this thing out. So, I mean, that's how this is like a, like a 10 to 7 game. Sure, McNamara is better, but they're running at these backers. They're finding success. They, you know, they throw it 13 times. They rush it 45 times. I don't, I don't think know. you would do that. You got to keep it going. You don't think Kirk Ferentz would would lean on somebody? I think with Kirk Ferentz back on the sideline, yeah, I think that they would. If they've got a lead, they will go back to Iowa. Kind Come of on, way. don't put it back. Don't put what? it back in the bottle. You know, Kirk was like stuck inside, like a, a like a room, just pounding on the walls, telling him to run the damn ball last week while he's watching on TV. He couldn't stand watching him throw it all over him in the second half. Like. Did you- <laughs> This is an oh, NFL total, though. Like, it, I mean, it's it worse. really is it's worse. Yeah. I mean, I predicted, I predicted in my column this week in, in my three hot takes section that I was going to score thirty points a game. So by that logic, if the total's at thirty-five and a half, we've got a thirty to three final score here. So, what was the record they keep beating? Was it thirty? Did ever? What was? Because they set like three records last year, four records for the lowest totals in the game. Or is it lower than this? Did they get to? The 20. Northwestern Iowa game got down to like 32 or yeah. 32 and a half. I don't remember if it touched version. 29, mm-hmm. but by the so way, since Bud since Bud buried Deacon Hill, I'll just continue because I did see Chris Hassel, our resident Iowa Hawkeye, he put out a Deacon Hill highlight. He had a rushing touchdown. And Great. so I was like, are we sure we didn't Great make train. a mistake on him? And then I looked up his stat line just now. <laughs> Oh, was he terrible. was 11 of 23 yeah. for 104. But he had that one touchdown run. Oh, stop it, Ryan, in the chat. That's messed up. That's, so messed up. <laughs> that's, that's your new quarterback. Got, DJ, you replaced play FSU. FSU. That's just a low blow. All right. Change of subject. <laughs> I'm being hoisted by my own petard here because this damn T-shirt is like a nightgown, and it is driving me insane. <laughs> it's freaking huge. You deserve it. <laughs> um, 